I'm going to take you guys through a carnivore, what I eat in a day, and a couple of things have changed recently. Most importantly, I am now eating more food because I am bodybuilding, lifting weights, to prove a couple of people wrong. I'm sure it's more than a couple at this point. This is based on two overarching principles. One, the presence of raw, cooked, and fermented food in every single indigenous diet. All of our ancestors ate raw food. They ate cooked food and they ate fermented food, specifically animal foods. The second principle is nutrient density, obtaining all of our vitamins, minerals, elements, and fatty acids. And these two are intertwined fairly easily. Uh, right now I'm having two meals a day usually, uh, one meal in the morning, uh, then I try to work out sometime during the day, then I have a meal at night. This isn't always consistent and my meal timing is honestly all over the place right now, but I do have this meal in the morning and another meat-based meal at night. Uh, right now I've really been liking raw dairy. Uh, raw dairy is not only super approachable, it's nutritionally complete uh, with the exception of preformed EPA and DHA. You know, so when you drink raw milk, uh, grass-fed, whether it's from a cow, goat, or sheep, you're getting all of the fat soluble vitamins, all of the minerals, all of the elements you need. It's just the fatty acids are in the alpha linolenic acid form, and our body converts them at pretty low rates. Granted, the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio in your diet is correct. If your omega-6 is elevated at all, you'll have a hard time converting uh, these fatty acids. So, since I do have a balanced omega fatty acid ratio, uh, I'm not too concerned about getting incredibly high amounts of omega-3 in the preformed version. If you do eat eggs on a daily basis, that kind of cancels things out because although you're getting a lot of omega-6 from the eggs, the eggs also have the preformed EPA and DHA. Uh, so this is mostly goat dairy. Uh, I have some goat milk here. I have some goat kefir uh, and some goat yogurt. And there I have some more goat kefir fermenting. Uh, the kefir I make is way too fermented. It, it pretty much tastes like acrid alcohol. I, you know, let it sit at room temperature for like one, two, three weeks. That's how I like the kefir. Uh, really has a lot of beneficial uh, probiotic. Uh, the bacterial profile is excellent. Uh, you know, you have a lot of bifidum bacteria. You have a lot of strep bacteria, a lot of, uh, I can't even remember the strains right now, but the point is that the kefir has lactobacillus, bifidum, as well as some soil-based microbes that are native to the human intestinal system. And even when compared to yogurt or cheese, the amount of bacteria in kefir and the strains in kefir are unique to that specific probiotic culture. So I do like keeping that consistent and I don't always have all of these dairy sources every day. It depends on how I feel. Uh, if I'm like dehydrated, I might not have the cheese because the high salt content of the cheese, you know, might make me even more dehydrated. Uh, you know, if I'm not feeling like I can handle the lactose or I drank a lot of milk the night before, I won't have the milk. Uh, most consistently, I have the kefir just about every day. Uh, the yogurt I'll have if I don't have the cheese. And um, more often than not, I don't have the milk. What I'll usually do is I'll have a little bit of yogurt, a little bit of kefir, you know, a little bit of cheese, and maybe I'll have the milk during my workout or throughout the day, a glass or two, and, and then I'll just drink water the rest of the day. Uh, I do like starting uh, with drinking the kefir. Uh, I always try to go with my natural appetite. And uh, seeing as all of these foods are nutritionally complete because they all have dairy fat, the thing that differs is the water-soluble vitamin content. Uh, so when we look at milk, the amount of available B vitamins and the available vitamin C in milk is higher than yogurt. Uh, there's no real vitamin C in kefir because it's so fermented. But uh, the bacteria content of kefir, of yogurt, still maintains a high B vitamin content. Now, if we did switch over to, you know, something like cream or butter, uh, the water soluble vitamin content is lower uh, because it correlates directly to the protein content. It's like super lactic, sour, really has like that carbonation, that tingling to it. What are you, a vegan Frankie drinking out of a mason jar? I wish I was vegan. I'd have 10 times as many, probably more than 10 times as many subscribers right now. So this is actually a sheep milk cheese. Uh, this isn't a goat cheese, but I have been trying to stick to goat and sheep dairy. Uh, I have noticed a slight inflammatory response from cow dairy. My goal is to stick with the goat and sheep dairy for a period of a few months and then see if I can transition to cow dairy when I no longer have any reactions whatsoever uh, from this. 
Uh, right now, the only issue I do have occasionally is if I drink too much milk, my body can't handle all the lactose. Uh, I can maybe drink like a glass or two of milk at once, uh, but that's about it. Now, the main reason to include cheese is for the higher vitamin K2 content. Yes, the kefir is fermented, and yes, fermented foods do have vitamin K2, but cheese has a longer fermentation period. Uh, the bacteria in cheese, I'm led to believe, are more conducive to creating vitamin K2 because cheese tends to be made in the peak summer months. You know, when they make cheese from the sheep dairy, from the cow dairy, the animals are usually grazing. And when the grass is really green, the chlorophyll is really high in the grass, that translates to vitamin K1, which gives the animals vitamin K2 in their tissue, which then converts to vitamin K2 in the dairy product, and that increases further when it ferments. Eggs are also a good source of vitamin K2, but the problem with eggs is, and the problem with liver, is the vitamin A content is pretty high. So, you know, you need vitamin synergy. So if you want to increase your vitamin K2 content without increasing your vitamin A, without increasing your vitamin D too much, cheese is good. Uh, you could supplement it or you could consume other types of fermented uh, animal fat based foods. I would say most people aren't getting enough vitamin K2 and there's no real limit of the amount of vitamin K2 you can take. But when you go too high on the vitamin A, the vitamin D3, you can have problems. And I really like cheese. If, if I had to pick one dairy product and I could only eat one, it would probably be cheese. Uh, second would probably be milk. All this is from a local farm, including the cheese. I usually don't actually buy cheese from local farms because I prefer a lot of the European cheeses. You know, there's some great Spanish cheeses. And as I'm eating the cheese, it usually gets me a little thirsty, you know, because cheese is very dry especially these hard cheeses. Uh, so I will sip on the kefir as I'm eating it. I think I'm good with just the cheese and kefir today. My main goal for this meal is not only nutrient density. I want to establish the beneficial bacteria early on in the day, mainly because I have a histamine intolerance. And for those of you that don't know what a histamine intolerance is, uh, when aged foods uh, age, essentially rot, the histamine content goes up, your body can have an immune response to these histamines, you know, they get stored in the brain, uh, they get stored in the intestines, and your body needs to uh, detox them using certain enzymes. And some of you might be thinking, Frank, if you have a histamine tolerance, how are you eating this much fermented food? Uh, certain strains of bacteria are histamine degrading, certain strains of bacteria are histamine promoting, and by balancing these in the correct ratios, you can consume high histamine foods in large amounts even with the histamine tolerance. Granted, a bunch of other factors. So, you know, I will probably do an ebook on that in the future, and I will also do an ebook on how to fix a dairy allergy in the future. There's just a couple of things I have to critique for you guys, and I, if I'm going to sell something, I want it to be definitive and work and know that it can help a lot of people. Uh, so, we have that probiotic bacteria established, and one thing that will allow me to do is drink the milk. So, if I don't have kefir in the morning, you know, there's going to be less of that bacteria that's going to break down the lactose in my stomach. So I should be able to handle more milk now, uh, at least in like an hour or two, than I would have if I did not have this meal. Now that's definitely something else to keep in mind. Uh, so I'm probably going to go through my day, maybe I'll work out, I'll go to the gym, and I will see you guys tonight for meal number two. For meal number two, we're having what might be my two most favorite foods in general, cheeseburgers and brains. Uh, so for the prep, I have some lamb brains, uh, courtesy of Frankie's Free Range Meat. And if you guys do order lamb brains on our site, they come in this cute little box. And there's like six lamb brains individually wrapped. It's like a, a little gift basket, except it's kind of creepy because it's a bunch of brains. Uh, but I, I thought it was pretty neat. Uh, I have some ground beef from a local farm, super fresh. Cow was slaughtered about a week and a half ago. As some of you guys may not know, most meat in the supermarket is, you know, six, seven, eight, nine weeks old, even months old. And the cheese today is Pecorino Sardo. It's a Sardinian sheep cheese that is raw. It's not really that expensive because people don't like sheep cheeses in the context of cheese culture. Uh, but cheese is cheese when it's, it's melted on the burger. It's going to be delicious either way. Usually I'll eat like a pound and a half to two pounds of meat at once. I'm not that hungry today, so... 
I made about like a pound, a pound and a quarter instead. I uh, just formed the ground meat into some balls and then I'll put them in my carbon steel pan. No fat, no oil, no anything. I'll press down the burgers into the carbon steel. And then these burgers are gonna render down, they'll get a nice brown crust. Then I can flip them over and we can put the cheese on top. If you guys haven't seen my cookware video, I will link that at the end here where I talk about you know the pros and cons of various types of pans, you know, cast iron, carbon steel, stainless steel, nonstick. Uh, so now I'm gonna grate the cheese. And you know, this is why most people aren't healthy. You know, you gotta put a lot of work and effort. You know, from the food sourcing to the actual preparation of the food, everything has to be really done from scratch. Plus, you're spending a lot more on the ingredients. From a nutritional perspective, you don't really need a lot of omega-3 in your diet. So, I wouldn't actually eat more than, you know, two or three of these lamb brains per week. These are very hard to pan sear when they're wet. Uh, you're not going to get that nice of a crust. So I'm going to try to dry these off on a towel. What I like doing is like squeezing the cheese together. Because if you just put this grated cheese on the burger, it's likely to fall off. So I have this like cheese patty that I could just put on the burger. So lamb brains are going to go in the pan around the burgers. I think I'll just do three today, actually. Looks like a lot of brains. I'm just gonna saute the brains in the pan real quick, and then we'll put the burgers under the broiler in the oven uh, to melt the cheese. It's one of the nice things about a carbon steel pan is you could just throw it in the oven. That's good. Oh man, this pan weighs like 40 pounds, I swear to God. Maybe that'll take like five minutes. As you guys can see, I try to be pretty efficient with my time. Like I put the burgers in the pan, grated the cheese. You know, I'm kind of multitasking to get my meal done as quick as possible. And sometimes I do just eat the brains raw, uh, which, you know, I don't really enjoy it as much. But, you know, I wouldn't say that, you know, eating raw brains is one of the nastiest foods. It's very mild, it's soft, it's rich. But I do prefer them cooked, especially pan seared uh, with a little bit of salt on them. And here I have some Fleur de Sel de Grand, which is probably the most famous salt in the world. It's a pretty expensive, uh, light, flaky finishing salt. And that's what I've been using lately. One reason is because, you know, they scrape it off the top of the seabeds. Uh, so, you know, you would assume the level of pollution and anything negative kind of sinks to the bottom. And the main reason I like brains so much is because I don't really eat eggs anymore. Uh, I do like eggs as well, but it's hard to find eggs that aren't fed corn or soy. Therefore, the omega ratio in the eggs is usually off. It has a high omega-6 content. Brains, on the other hand, if from lamb, if from ruminant animals, do have a balanced omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. So unless you want to eat wild-caught fish, Brains are the next best source of omega-3 without getting too much omega-6. They're so good. A lot of people, especially that follow me, are obsessed with eating raw food. And I'm like, okay, if raw food is so much better, why does this taste so good? <laughs> And I've done several videos on raw versus cooked, but at the end of the day, the premise is always food quality. And tying back to what I said earlier about multitasking, I usually would eat, you know, this while my burgers or my steak finish cooking. And I'm actually really full. This is, this is super filling. You know, when a food has a very high nutrient density, you can't really eat that much of it. Plus I put way too much salt on this. So brains are not only an amazing source of omega-3 in its most available phospholipid form, 
which passes through the brain easier. Brains have all of the fat soluble vitamins in pretty substantial amounts. I think some of the minerals and elements are really high too. Uh, copper is pretty high, uh, has a decent amount of sodium in the brain as salt is stored in the brain. You know, there's definitely some vitamin A, some retinol. We definitely have some small amounts of vitamin D3. I wouldn't call it significant, but there's definitely some vitamin D3 stored in the brain. Uh, one of the main selling points of this might be the vitamin E content, but vitamin E is usually in foods to prevent oxidation, uh, the oxidation of the fats. Uh, maybe a small amount of B vitamins as well. Uh, but overall, you can't replicate the nutrient profile of brain outside of eating, as I said, fish. So if you're only eating ruminant animals and you're not eating brains, you're not getting as much omega-3s as your body needs. And again, you don't have to have a lot of brains. You know, I would say, you know, 100 grams, 150 grams a week, maybe, you know, four to five ounces is plenty of omega-3. And you also have to consider that if your past diet was high in omega-6, you know, it's gonna take a couple years of balancing your omega-3 to omega-6 ratios to get the lipid profile in your body back to where it should be. Since the sheep cheese is very dry, it doesn't melt, but you can see we got some really nice caramelization on the top of the cheese. I kind of wish I seasoned the burgers with salt before I cook them, uh, but oh well, we'll just put salt as we cook it. Uh, we got the scarecrow here, but I'm sure the burgers are enough to scare away any vegans. And I guess we'll check the cooking temperature. Oh, this cheese is, is like really crispy. This is gonna be so good. So I cook the burgers a bit more than I usually do. I would say they're actually rare this time instead of completely raw in the middle. Uh, from a nutritional perspective, uh, grass-fed ground beef, you know, mostly B vitamins. There's some fat-soluble vitamins in the fat, but it really depends on the quality of the pasture here. But it's, it's an overall pretty balanced amount of all the fat-soluble vitamins, plenty of water-soluble vitamins, predominantly, you know, protein macronutrients, fat macronutrients. The raw cheese on here is for the additional fat-soluble vitamins. So any high-quality dairy product, especially a raw sheep cheese, is going to have incredibly high amounts of vitamin A, retinol, uh, high amounts of vitamin D3 if it was on pasture. Uh, there's gonna be, most importantly, a significant vitamin K2 content in the cheese as it is a fermented product. So, you know, when that initial dairy product has a high vitamin K1 content from the chlorophyll in the green grasses the animals are eating, correspondingly, the cheese will have a high vitamin K2 content. There's our piece steaming hot it's pretty good I will say I could definitely have gotten like a raw cheddar cheese and it would have been more enjoyable I never really indulged in cheese too much on the carnivore diet but like three to four weeks ago I was craving cheeseburgers so badly I was literally lying in bed thinking about cheeseburgers uh, so I had to try this and it definitely satisfies the craving, but I'm led to believe I was just craving the cheese on top because I keep just like taking the cheese off the top and eating it. It's so good. I think tomorrow I'm just going to eat like a block of melted cheese. <laughs> Maybe we can make some uh, sourdough rye bread or sourdough wheat bread like we made last year and just make a, a grilled cheese sandwich. That's like 90% cheese. Or a pizza. One thing I don't like doing is, you know, forcing myself to overeat just because I prepared the food. The way I alleviate that is all of the meat scraps from any of my meals, I just throw them in a freezer bag and I'll use it to make like a beef stock or, or some type of stock, you know, a few weeks, a few months down the line. All right, I feel like a little piggy right now. I'm stuck. Not like, not like stuffed, I'm just not hungry. I can definitely finish most of this, but as we said, not stuffing myself. Who does this? Who's, he just like stuffs all the napkins in the container like I can't even get one out. Just this meal itself is nutritionally complete. You know, we didn't have to have meal number one. So, you know, even if I was eating one of these meals a day, it doesn't matter. We're getting all the vitamins, minerals, elements, fatty acids our body needs. Not only that, I'm checking all the boxes for raw food, cooked food, 
and fermented food. You know, the middle of the ground beef is raw, the middle of the brains we cooked were still raw. Of course, we have the cooked outside and the cheese is fermented. Uh, so if we're able to replicate all of these aspects of indigenous diets, I can't really think of something healthier and I've never felt better on any diet period. You know, nutrient bioavailability, uh, you know, eating natural foods, you know, all of this stuff is identical to taking it out of nature. None of these foods are processed, treated in any unnatural way whatsoever. Uh, you could essentially, you know, make all this food in the middle of a forest. Uh, you know, it's a far cry from uh, what vegans are doing with their blenders and uh, 17 different foods shipped from around the world. So as I've mentioned several times throughout this video, you know, we do have ground beef on Frankie's free range meat. We do sell a variety of raw cheeses. Of course, we have those adorable lamb brains in that box. We're looking at getting some more raw cheeses and even providing you guys with raw dairy in the future. Uh, I think I might do an update video on Frankie's free range meat. Uh, let me know if you guys would like to see that uh, sometime soon. So definitely take a look at Frankie's free range meat.com. You can also go to Frankie's naturals.com for minimal ingredient, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. Thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon and share the video if you wish. If you guys would like to reach out to me pertaining to optimizing your carnivore diet based on my almost seven years of experience now, uh, you can send me an email, frankatufano at gmail.com. Thanks again for joining me, guys. Enjoy the rest of your week.